Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. I uh, may have a radio, internet radio type program, uh, tentatively for Sunday, 10 o'clock to midnight. I'm not sure if it's Eastern Standard Time or not, but just in case something happens to me on YouTube, uh, it's called Patriots, plural, Patriots, soapbox.com. And uh, my suggestion is you type it straight into the browser because Google doesn't like that place. Yeah. It's not a Christian site so much. Uh, they do do have a Christian lady that um, I think it, you know, I'm pretty sure it's, well, I'm almost positive it's a woman um, that um, I guess listened to my rantings and ravings and thought, well, you know, we got a spot open. So, eh, Chaplain Bob's better than nothing, right? So, but uh, the, uh, they are what's considered a conservative site and um, you know people yeah it's a lot better than uh, the left right the conservatives someone once uh, I once heard that if you're not a Democrat by the time you're um, 30 you don't have a heart but if you're not a conservative, by the time you're 40, you don't have a brain. I don't know how true that is, but it's kind of stuck with me. So, but uh, yeah, I used to be pretty liberal. Now I'm extremely conservative, and I'm but I'm a lot more than 40. So, yeah, actually, I became a conservative about the time I was in my, uh, I guess, mid 30s. Yeah, mid 30s. Alrighty, uh, so let's get going here. This is going to be, I don't remember what part it is, but it's going to be on the playlist uh, of King Saul. And uh, 1 Samuel chapter 25, I did on uh, the fool. And I put that in the playlist on Saul, King Saul, the playlist on King Saul. Now, remember, uh, David had slain, slain Goliath, and Israel was very happy about that, of course. And uh, Saul had said, hey, anybody that uh, kills Goliath, I'm going to give you my daughter to be a wife. And his youngest daughter, Michelle, uh, she loved David. She, you know, but uh, trouble is, Saul became jealous of David, and uh, the Lord rejected Saul from being king, and he, he knows his days are numbered. So here it is, he's running around trying to kill King David. And even though David had uh, killed a bunch of Philistines as a dowry for the king, guess what? Saul decided to give his wife away to somebody else while David's on the run. I mean, here it is. Saul tried to kill David at least three times, maybe four so, you know, that's what you get. No good deed goes unpunished. Yeah. Uh, Saul threw a javelin at David twice. And then chasing him around the countryside, trying to catch him. I mean, really? Come on, dude. You know, you think you're pleasing the Lord by doing all this? But Saul really doesn't care anymore. So, in... 1 Samuel chapter 25, we read in verse 44, it says, But Saul, King Saul, 
had given Mishal, his daughter, David's wife, to Phati, the son of Laish, which is of Gallim. So here it is. He gave away David's wife to another guy. I mean, really? I mean, you know, he, shh, bad news. All right, so let's go to 1 Samuel chapter 26. Verse 1. And the Ziphites came unto Saul to Gibeah, saying, All right, I looked it up. It's part 7. This is going to be Saul, part 7. And first... Uh, 1 Samuel chapter 26 and verse 1. Okay, we'll start over. And the Ziphites came unto Saul to Gibeah, saying, Doth not David hide himself in the hill of Hakilal, which is before Jeshimam? Boy, I know I'm slaughtering these words, but... Then Saul arose and went down to the wilderness of Ziph, having 3,000 chosen, chosen men of Israel with him, to seek David in the wilderness of Ziph. Now, David's got 600 men. Saul has got 3,000. So, uh, yeah, David's outnumbered five to one. Not good odds, right? And Saul pitched in the hill of Hachshelah, which is before Jeshimon, by the way, but David abode in the wilderness, and he saw that Saul came after him into the wilderness. David therefore sent out spies and understood that Saul was come in very deed. And David arose and came to the place where Saul had pitched. You know, you've heard pitched his, your tent? Yeah. Where Saul had pitched, and David beheld the place where Saul lay. And Abner, the son of Ner, the captain of his host... Now, Abner was, uh, he was like the uh, head of the Pentagon, I guess you could say, or the Ministry of Defense or whatever. Depends on where you're at, right? Uh, Abner is like Saul. When it comes to the military, Abner is his right-hand man. Uh, the captain of his host. And Saul lay in the trench, and the people pitched round about him. Then, Dave, uh, then answered David and said to Ahimelech the Hittite, and to Abishai the son of Zerulah, brother to Joab, saying, Who go down with me to, uh, to Saul to the camp? And Ab Abishal said, I will go down with thee. So David and Abishal, Abishai, came to the people by night. Behold, Saul lay sleeping within the trench, and his spear stuck in the ground at his bolster. But Abner, but Abner and the people lay round about him. Then said Abishai, Abishal. To David, God hath delivered mine enemy. God hath delivered thine enemy into thine hand this day. Now therefore let me smite him, I pray thee, with the spear, even to the earth at once. And I will not smite him the second time. So here it is. He wants to kill him. David's problems are all over. Just kill him, right? And David said to Abishal, Destroy him not, for who can stretch forth his hand against the Lord's anointed and be guiltless? Now remember, the prophet Samuel had anointed Saul to be king at the hand of, you know, by the, uh, per the Lord's words 
And David said, furthermore, as the Lord liveth, the Lord shall smite him or his day shall come to die or he shall descend into battle and perish. The Lord forbid that I should stretch forth mine hand against the Lord's anointed, but I pray thee, take thou, take thou now the spear that is at his bolster and the cruise of water and let us go. Now, why is he going to take his spear and his bottle of water? Simple. You're proving, you're going to prove to Saul that you were there and you could have killed him, but you didn't. So David took the spear and the cruise of water from Saul's bolster and they got them away and no man saw it nor knew it, neither awaked. For they were all asleep because a deep sleep from the Lord was fallen upon them. I believe this is the second time that it says a deep sleep from the Lord. Uh, one time, first time we heard about that was when the Lord put Adam to sleep and took a piece of rib and there you go, Eve, right? Well, here it is. The Lord was protecting David. And he put a deep sleep on him. You want to make sure nobody woke up. Then David went over to the other side and stood on the top of an hill afar off, a great space being between them. And David cried to the people and to Abner the son of Ner, saying, Answerest thou not, Abner? Then Abner answered and said, Who art thou that criest to the king? And David said to Abner, Art not thou a valiant man? And who is like to thee in Israel? Wherefore then hast thou not kept thy lord the king? For there came one of the people in to destroy the king thy lord. Oh yeah, somebody came in to, to kill the king. And what were you doing, Abner? You were sleeping, dude. Well, that's the Bob translation. Verse 16. This thing is not good that thou hast done. As the Lord liveth, ye are worthy to die because ye have not kept your master, the Lord's anointed. And now see where the king's spear is and the cruise of water that was at his bolster. And Saul knew David's voice and said, Is this thy voice, my son, David? And David said, It is my voice, my lord, O king. And he said, uh, David, Wherefore doth my Lord thus pursue after his servant? For what have I done? Or what evil is in mine hand? Now therefore I pray thee, let my Lord the King hear the words of his servant. If the Lord hath stirred thee up against me, let him accept an offering. But if they be the children of men, Cursed be they before the Lord, for they have driven me out this day from abiding in the inheritance of the Lord, saying, Go, serve other gods. Now therefore, let not my blood fall to the earth before the face of the Lord, for the king of Israel is come out to seek a flea, as when one doth hunt a partridge in the mountains. Then said Saul, I have sinned. You know, those are the, probably the three words that the Lord loves to hear out of our mouths more than anything else. I have sinned. Return, my son David, for I will no more do thee harm, because my soul was precious in thine eyes this day. Behold, I have played the fool and have erred exceedingly. And David answered and said, Behold the king's spear, and let one of the young men come over and fetch it. 
The Lord rendered every man his righteousness and his faithfulness, for the Lord delivered thee into my hand today. But I would not stretch forth mine hand against the Lord's anointed. And behold, as thy life was much set by this day in mine eyes, so let my life be much set by in the eyes of the Lord, and let him deliver me out of all tribulation. What is tribulation? Trouble. Then Saul said to David, Blessed be thou, my son David. Thou shalt do, uh, thou shalt both do great things, and also shalt still prevail. So David went on his way, and Saul returned to his place. Next chapter. Chapter 27. And Saul said, I'm sorry, and David said in his heart, I shall now perish one day by the hand of Saul. There is nothing better for me than that I should speedily escape into the land of the Philistines. And Saul shall despair of me to seek me any more in any coast of Israel. So shall I escape out of his hand. And David arose and he passed over with the 600 men that were with him unto Achish, the son of Maot, Maoch, king of Gath. So here it is. David's going to the enemies of Israel. Because he can't hide in Israel. Everybody wants to turn him in to gain favor, gain favor with King Saul. You know, that's what you get for uh, doing something great like killing Goliath, you know? Verse 3, And David dwelt with Achish at Gath, he and his men, every man with his household, even David with his two wives. Ahinoam the Jezreelitess, and Abigail the Carmelitess, Nabal's wife. And it was told Saul that David was fled to Gath, and he sought no more again for him. So, here it is, David runs to the enemies of Israel, and Saul's like, oh boy, to get to David, I got to fight the Philistines. So, I guess Saul just said, okay, never mind, I give up. And David said to Achish, if I have now found grace in thine eyes, let them give me a place in some town in the country that I may dwell there. For why should thy servant dwell in the royal city with thee? Then Achish gave him Ziklag that day. Wherefore Ziklag pertaineth unto the kings of Judah unto this day. And the time that David dwelt in the country of the Philistines was a full year and four months. And David and his men went up and invaded the Geshurites and the Gezrites and the Amalekites. For those nations were of old the inhabitants of the land, as thou goest to Shur, even unto the land of Egypt. And David smote the land. Oh yeah, he goes in and he cleans house. And left neither man nor woman alive. And took away the sheep and the oxen and the asses and the camels and the apparel and returned and came to Achish. Uh, you know, there's Bible teachers that'll tell you, oh, this is horrible. He, David killed all these people. Well, guess what? They were all related to the Canaanites. They were satanic hybrids. Satanic human hybrids. Uh, you know, churches have an absolute hissy fit when you mention this stuff. Boy, you mention this stuff in a demon nominational church, they will throw you out so fast, it'll make your head spin. 
sort of like uh, Linda Blair in that, uh, what was it, the Omen movie or whatever? I don't remember. I don't know. I never got into horror movies. Never did like them. Never liked horror movies. Like sci-fi, didn't like horror movies. Well, guess what? All these people that like horror movies are getting ready to live one. Oh, yeah. God's righteous, holy indignation is upon this country. Not just this country, but Europe too. And all the nations where his former people dwell. The Bible says, The wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. Well, guess what? We have forgotten God. And your demon nominational church teaches that, oh, well, we're not going to be here. We're going to fly out of here. Uh, well, if you say so, if you fly out of here, it'll be because somebody cut your head off. So, so David goes out and uh, plundered the area, killed all the women, all the men, all women took, took all the livestock and the, their clothing. And I'm sure the gold and silver too, if they had any. And returned and came to Achish. And Achish said, Whither have ye made a road today? And David said, Against the south of Judah and against the south of the Jera." Melites and against the south of the Kenites. And David saved neither man nor woman alive to bring tidings to Gath. So here it is. He, he killed people that were in his territory, but he didn't want to let them know that he's attacking Gath's, King Gath's people. So he lied to them and told them that uh, he attacked Israel. Judah, specifically. Now, let me tell you something. When the, uh, in, the in Egypt, when uh, Moses and Israel was in Egypt, uh, the Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, told the Hebrew midwives to kill the male children. Throw them into the Nile River. Let them drown. Let the Nile crocodiles eat them. You know, that's a nice little tidbit, snack. Uh, but they lied to him. And here it is, King David's lying to Gath. But you listen to churches, they'll say, oh, well, we should never lie. No, that's not true. We are absolutely allowed to lie to God's enemies. Absolutely allowed to lie to God's enemies. What did God do to the Hebrew women, the midwives that lied to uh, Pharaoh? He blessed them and gave them houses. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So we can lie to the father of lies and their followers and their children. Absolutely. And David saved neither man nor woman alive to bring tidings to Gath, saying, lest they should tell on us, saying, so did David and so will be his manner all the while he dwelleth in the country of the Philistines. And Achish believed David, saying, He hath made his people Israel utterly to abhor, or hate, him. Therefore he shall be my servant forever. So here it is. He, David told him he attacked um, Israel so that, uh, you know, make, make the uh, enemy of Israel think, you know, David's uh, David's now hated by Israel. So pretty good plan. Plus, you you know you wanted to go get some cattle and livestock, so the, he attacked Gath's people, but he hid it from them. Pretty smart thing to do, if you ask me. All right, let's go to chapter twenty-eight. All right, I'm going to make this the uh, end of part seven. And uh, when we come back, I'm going to make part eight uh, in 1 Samuel chapter 28, 
Reason being, uh, I want to do no more than two chapters at a time. So Saul is uh, getting ready to die. Yeah. So, and that uh, will be the, once Saul is dead, that's the end of this part of King Saul, two of them. And then we're going to go look at the life of Saul, who became the Apostle Paul. And you're going to find there's a lot of people, especially they of the, into the so-called sacred name people and those that are into what's called Hebrew roots. Um, they want to take us back to the Old Testament. That's what they want to do. They want to take us back to the Old Testament. What Jesus did on the cross, oh, I'm sorry, not Jesus. It's Yeshua. Uh, well, thing is, my Bible, my New Testament, was originally written in Greek. There are absolutely zero Hebrew New Testaments manuscripts that I am aware of. But there are about 5,000 Greek ones of the New Testament. And besides, who were the people that were opposing Jesus and the apostles per the Bible? Uh, let's see. The Catholic Church? No, they didn't even exist. Uh, the Mormons? Uh, no, sorry. Uh, the Jehovah's Witnesses? No, they came afterwards. Um, let's see who, give you a little hint. They hang out in the synagogues. Yeah. Yeah. Those people, they were the ones that always opposed everything that Jesus did. Well, obviously not everybody, but, uh, you know, there's a lot of people that, um, uh, a lot of people of Judah that became Christians a lot. I think there was like three to five pe thousand people that got saved in one day in the book of Acts. Oh, yeah. People preached. Well, the apostles preached and people believed. And they came to the Lord. And there was no need for the temple anymore. No need for the temple anymore. So... Alrighty, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' precious name. Amen.